In this episode of Museums Without Borders, we partner with the VNA to take another look at the popular Tipu's Tiger and a rare textile souvenir from MAPS collection with strikingly similar Tiger Man imagery. Join us while we explore ideas of conflict and convergence, highlight sensorial experiences, and analyze historic cultures. Can Indian and European cultural meanings converge in an object? Our exploration of the idea begins here as we discuss the possibilities of how a textile made in India becomes a keepsake when it travels with its European owner. Let's begin with the text Forget Me Not, present from India, that circles the emblematic tiger and man. Here, present from India indicates that this is a gift from a collective group rather than an individual. The words Forget Me Not reveal that the keepsake or souvenir was made for a person who was moving away from India, possibly a British officer or a soldier. But what is even more interesting is the imagery of a European man in combat with a tiger. This is one of the most popular objects in the V&A. It's an almost life-size painted wooden tiger mauling the prostrate figure of a man in European clothes wearing a black hat. It's been known as Tipu's Tiger since it arrived in Britain in 1800 because it was made for Tipu Sultan, the remarkable ruler of Mysore from 1782 to 1799. You can see that there's a flap on the body that opens to reveal the keyboard and pipes of an organ inside and the handle next to it operates the organ's internal bellows. An internal mechanism also makes the man's hand lift up and when it does, a sound comes out of his open mouth, supposedly to suggest his blood-curdling scream. Unlike Tipu's tiger, this textile souvenir was perhaps exchanged in the 20th century, when India was on the verge of independence. We can speculate that our makers were already aware of the incidents in which English officers were attacked by tigers on their frequent hunting trips. From the 18th to late 19th century, the news of these incidents changed across years and the imagery of a tiger and an Englishman inspired ceramic figures in India and Britain. This fascinating textile souvenir's central imagery of a tiger and a man resembles the ceramic styles of early Staffordshire pearlware. Like Tipu's tiger, the imagery shows a tiger mauling what is probably an Englishman. What seems now to be simply an amusing curiosity in fact represents a fundamental aspect of Tipu Sultan's reign. It's a light-hearted expression of something seen in much more sophisticated form in other objects made for the ruler. We don't know exactly when the wooden tiger was made, though it was definitely in the palace by 1792, when an English military artist saw it and sketched it. If we look at it from the perspective of the 1790s, we can have a good idea of what it was meant to convey. The great threat to Tipu Sultan's kingdom came from the British. He and his father, between them, fought four wars against the English East India Company between 1767 and 1799, trying to stop them taking control of Mysore. Let's take a look at the craftsmanship and what it tells us. The gold embroidery on the coarse cotton mixed with linen adds a layer of complexity. The makers chose this medium, perhaps emulating the techniques used in designing garments for wealthy noblemen, where gold was embroidered on dark fabric to create an opulent aesthetic. Gold embroidery as a form of decoration was also popular among the Europeans who settled in India. The additional use of the purple thread scattered across the face and body of the tiger provides the dramatic touch. Notice the little purple triangle of the dagger that has pierced through the body of the tiger. The purple thread highlights the rounded eyes of the tiger who looks almost astounded at the resistance he is receiving from his supposed victim. His quivering mouth lined with blood, again in purple thread, now looks comically dismayed as he faces a soldier who seems ready for battle. The tiger turns to us almost as if seeking our assistance, subverting the usual tiger man imagery. Unlike Tipu's tiger, the textile shows that the kneeling man who is being attacked by the animal has not only put up a good fight, 
but seems to be getting the better of it. The tiger is probably a reference to Tipu Sultan, while the man in medieval European armour could represent the many officers who lost their lives at the hands of the Sultan and his royal tigers. The tiger motifs that are seen on everything made for his personal use, from guns and swords to saddlecloths, tent canopies and palanquin pole ends, convey several powerful ideas. The most obvious is the strength of the ruler, symbolised by this magnificent beast. But the motif also draws on other traditions. Tipu Sultan had been given a princely education by his father and therefore learned Persian, the language of the elite across India, until the British replaced it with English. In Persian literary usage, the word shir can apply equally to lions and tigers, and the lion-tiger in Persian literature is a metaphor for the king as an invincible fighter who triumphs over his enemies. There was also a religious dimension. One battalion of the Muslim ruler's army was called the Asadullahi, or Lion of God Battalion. Again, this could be represented by a tiger or a lion, and the soldiers in it wore uniforms decorated with tiger stripes. All Tipu Sultan's personal weapons are covered in tiger motifs. And if we look closely at this pair of pistols, we can see small stripes inlaid in gold or chased in silver that are the same shape as the stylized, much larger stripes on the wooden tiger. Even the steel hammer of the flintlock of each pistol is in the form of a tiger stripe and has a tiger head. These tigers, like the wooden tiger in the V&A, represent the hoped-for annihilation of Tipu Sultan's enemies, the Westerners that he sometimes referred to as hat wearers. Tipu's tiger has often been seen simply as an amusing toy since its arrival in London in 1800 and its early display in the India Museum before it was permanently transferred to what would become the V&A. Although the tiger man motifs offer interesting interpretations, it is clear that this textile souvenir is an example of precious memorabilia for European settlers. Keepsakes like these carried memories of both loss and care. Drawing from scholar Maya Jasanoff's Edge of Empire, we observe the materiality of the textile souvenir and how it represents both the convergence and the conflict of two cultures. In conclusion, the form of the cartoonish beast mauling the prostrate figure has inspired artists, writers and sculptors ever since. The textile souvenir is one such example. And if we delve more deeply into its history, it provides a way of entering into the life and times of one of the most fascinating and significant rulers in India in the 18th century. It's an emblem of Tipu Sultan's fierce resistance against the encroachment on his territory by the British.